A Little Respect, Please, Smoke Alarms Save Lives by Bonnie Dixon. Most of us know them as the annoying noisemaker that warns us when our microwave popcorn is burning or when we have turned the broiler on, but smoke alarms save lives, a lot of lives. In 1915, people caught in a fire had a one in 10 chance of that fire killing them. That number has dropped to one in a hundred. As recently as 1977, more than 7,000 Americans died from fires. By the 1980s, legislation required smoke alarms be installed in every home as a result. Since 1998, the number of Americans lost in fires has consistently been around 3,600, except for 2001, because the, the loss of American lives due to the 9-11 tra tragedy are included in that number. Of those, the largest percentage of deaths is from residential house fires. House fires cause 2,620 civilian deaths on average each year, according to the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA. And according to the NFPA, if every home had working smoke alarms, approximately 1,100 additional lives could be saved annually. How do you prevent a house fire? Avoid leaving candles unattended and be aware of placement so they aren't left burning near flamm flammable materials. Keep combustible materials away from hot surfaces, such as space heaters or stoves. About 45,800 fires are caused by heating equipment each year and cost Americans about $1 billion. Have your home's electrical system inspected periodically by a professional. Don't overload outlets, cords, or appliances. Electrical fires cause 32,000 house fires and cost $1.3 billion each year. If you smoke, make sure that your smoking materials are completely extinguished before discarding them. Smoking materials cost $511. $511 million worth of damage each year. Store flammables away from heat sources or potential ignition points, such as pilot lights on furnaces or water heaters. Clean dryer vents regularly. Don't leave cooking unattended and keep flammable items such as pot holders away from hot surfaces. About 170,000 fires each year are directly attributed to cooking. The annual cost of fire damage from cooking causes $1.2 billion and accounts for 50% of all fires. What can you do to increase your odds of living through a house fire? Install smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors throughout your home. The NFPA estimates that approximately 30% of alarms do not work due to aging, removal of batteries, or failure to replace dead batteries. 57% of home fire deaths resulted from fires in homes with either no smoke alarms or no working smoke alarms. Most smoke alarm failures are the result of dead batteries. Change the batteries regularly. Fire departments usually recommend they get changed when clocks get changed forward or back. The good news for those of us who use who the good news for those of us who procrastinate some new smoke alarms have 10-year batteries for convenience the batteries are sealed within the unit which brings up another question and that is how often should you replace a smoke alarm the npfa recommends you replace your smoke alarm every 10 years regardless of battery operated or hand wired or whatever type of brand you have installed. If your smoke alarm also has a carbon monoxide detector, it may need to be changed as often as every five years. Keep a fire extinguisher in an easy to reach area. Be sure you know how to use it and check it twice a year for expiration or malfunctioning parts. There are five types of fire extinguishers, three of which are useful for homes. A type A fire extinguisher will handle common combustibles like wood, paper, cloth, trash, and plastics.
A type B fire extinguisher is useful for kitchens as they will put out flammable liquids such as grease or oil. And a type C extinguisher is rated for electrical equipment such as wiring, circuit breakers, machinery, electronics, and appliances. In addition to the general class rating, both A and B extinguishers have a numerical rating for equivalence to water. For instance, a 1A rating is equivalent to 1.25 gallons of water. A 4A rating is equivalent to five gallons of water. You can get household extinguishers at home improvement stores and cost anywhere from $15 and up, depending on factors such as whether it is rechargeable, multi-use, and size. Consider purchasing a fire blanket. Fire blankets cost anywhere from $10 and up and can be used to put out a fire if the fire is not substantial. It can also be used to escape a fire since most can resist heat to around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Huge caveat here. House fires can get to 1,100 degrees in about five minutes, so they will not keep you safe if you are in a forest fire or a major fire. In addition, they are typically made of fiberglass and can irritate the skin. They expire just as a fire extinguisher does, so keep an eye on the expiration date and replace them. They are also not reusable. If you use it, replace it. Finally, no one endorses them as the only two tool for fire prevention at home. If you have a fire blanket, also have an extinguisher. Have a fire escape plan. Every second counts when you are escaping a fire. You may have as little as one to two minutes to escape your home safely once an alarm sounds. If members of the family are difficult to awaken, make sure that someone is assigned to awaken them. The time to plan is before you need to evacuate. Inspect all possible exits and plan two ways out of every room. Make sure that windows and doors are clear of debris and open easily. Choose an outside meeting area. If someone in the household has mobility issues, designate someone to assist them in case of an emergency and have a backup for that person in case they are not available. Once out, stay out. Do not re-enter a burning building. <laughs>